Hey everyone, it's Kirsten here from K Digital Studio, but if you want to be BFFs, you can call me K. And as I'm sure you've guessed from the title and thumbnail of today's video, I'm going to show you my updated process for creating digital stickers on the iPad. If you want to watch my other digital sticker tutorial, since it's still full of good information, I'll link that in the cards and in the description. So to start and hopefully answer any questions I might get, I am using the newest iPad Pro, the 12.9 inch size, as well as the second generation Apple Pencil. The grip I am using is called the Nimble Grip by Uppercase, and I do have to remove it to charge the pencil, but it's just not that much of a hassle, and I really do love writing and drawing with it on my Apple Pencil. I do have a 15% off coupon code from Uppercase. You can add KDS15 at checkout if you want to match accessories with me. I make digital stickers using the Procreate app and I typically start off with just a screen size canvas. So I'm going to come up here to the plus icon and hit screen size. There are two ways I like to create digital stickers in Procreate and I'm going to walk you through the process of my favorite way first and then I'll chat with you about the second way closer to the end of this video. I typically freehand and draw all of my stickers, but if I find myself always using the same shapes or always wanting to use the same textures or illustration style, I'll create a brush set to speed up my workflow. And creating stickers for my digital planner is really no different. So I actually created this stamp set of shapes I was drawing all the time or common shapes that pop up in traditional planner stickers so I can easily stamp them onto my canvas drag and drop color, add patterns or texture, and then I have a really quick way to create a ton of stickers for my digital planner. So you can actually download a mini sample of this set for free. If you want the whole set, you can buy the entire stamp set from K Digital Studio, and I'll have the links for that in the description. So to start off with creating stickers, I am going to use some of the sticker set here just so you can see how they work. So I'm just going to zoom out a bit and let's see. I think I'm going to go with one of these flag stickers and I'm just going to increase the size here, see what it looks like. All right, so that's a good sticker size. So I'm going to come up here and just have my selection tool to move this. And then you can either drag and drop your colors in or you can paint them in if you want. I'm just going to go with a solid color and just drag and drop it over. And I want my sticker hearts to be white if I turn off the white background because I'm going to save these as transparent PNGs. So as you can see, there's actually no color in those hearts. So I'm just going to drag those over. And I don't want this black outline of the stamp. So what I'm going to do is actually turn on alpha lock. So I came up here to my layers panel and I'm going to select alpha lock. I'm gonna come back over here to my pink color here and I'm gonna to switch to my mono weight brush. And then I'm actually just going to paint that black outline away. And there we go. Come back to my layers panel to turn alpha lock off. And I think I'm just going to zoom in here and drag and drop. So drag and drop that on my black outline and I'm just going to increase the color drop threshold and then repeat for the rest of those outlines. So I'm not able to increase the threshold enough to get rid of this tiny little outline and still maintain the pink of the flag because as you saw as I was increasing the color threshold it wasn't covering this line but it was starting to affect the pink flag. So what I'm just going to do is color in the rest of that with my pen. And there we go. Just a really simple way of customizing these stickers even further. So now that I have this layer in, I'm actually going to come over here to my layers panel and duplicate it. And then I'm going to select this bottom layer. I'm going to tap it and hit select. I'm going to come up here to my colors and select black. And then I'm going to come over here to the bottom layer again and select fill layer. It fills the entire flag layer. And what I'm going to do is come up here to my magic wand and then come to Gaussian blur and layer. And then I'm going to hold my pencil on the screen and just, as you can see, increase the percentage of the blur. I'm going to settle around 5%. 
And then I'm going to come back over here to my layers panel and select this in icon. And then I'm just going to turn down the opacity. I'm going to turn it down to about 50% so I can have this cool little drop shadow of the sticker, kind of just make it look like it's popping off of the page. So what I can do is swipe both of those and group them if I want. I can also tap here and hit flatten and it makes it all one sticker. I typically don't flatten stickers until I know for certain that I want it all on one layer, if that makes sense. So I typically just leave it in a group and then move on to the next sticker. And then at the very end, if I'm running out of layers and I need to flatten a few and I know I'm gonna stick with that, then I'll do that. All right, so let's go ahead and create a new sticker here. I'm going to select a new layer and let's head back into my planner stamps here. And I think I'm going to go with maybe this cute little notepad here. That would be great for a little to-do list. I decrease the size of that a bit and I typically whenever I'm making sticker sets I just do the sticker side by side on one whole screen size so I can kind of see how the stickers are matching each other and coordinating and all of that and it just really helps so I'm gonna go here and I think I'm also going to do a bit of color drop I'm go with this color here and I'm just using the color palette the K digital studio color palette I use these colors all the time so I'm just gonna use the colors from that and I think I'll go with white lines for my lines here. I'm gonna drag them over to the white and then I can increase the threshold by holding my Apple Pencil on the screen. And then I'm just going to repeat for the other lines here. Whoops. So I dragged over my base pink color and arrange the color drop threshold and now the rings have disappeared a little bit and so what I'm going to do instead is do another new layer, come to my black, my notepad, stamp a new notepad and line up the rings. And then I'm gonna come over here to my eraser and actually erase all of this excess to leave the rings because I'm going to do a really cool masking technique that I wanted to show that I do often for my stickers. So there are so many different ways that you can use Procreate stamps. And this is one of the ways that I manipulate and use stamps. And I find this works really well for me. Of course, with Procreate, there are a thousand different ways to do something. So if you have an easier way that you like to do something in Procreate, by all means, go for it. All right, so now that I have the rings like how I want, I'm actually going to go up here and do a new layer again, come up to my wrench icon and then insert a file. And then on my iCloud drive, I actually have a ton of metallic texture so that I'm going to pull in and kind of give to those rings. So here we go. So I'm just going to try a few out and see what looks great with my little notepad. So I'm gonna select this one. If you don't have metallic, textures saved on your iPad, what you can do is head to pexels.com or unsplash.com. I'll try and link some resources below that have metallic textures, or you can purchase metallic textures from other creators off places like Etsy or Creative Market. And I believe that is where I got these metallic textures from is Creative Market. So I'm just going to place this metallic texture over my notepad, and then I'm gonna come over here and click the layer that my metallic texture is on and select clipping mask. And it's going to clip to whatever is drawn and created under it. So it's clipping to those rings. And then what I can do is move this texture around to see what I like. So I'm going to go with this placement. And now that I have that in there, there is my cute little notepad. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to merge all of these together by pinching them, because I know I want my notepad to look like that. Similarly to the flag, I'm going to duplicate this sticker, select the bottom layer and hit select. Come back to my layers and hit fill layer. Then I'm gonna to come to my magic wand and hit Gaussian blur layer. And then I'm going to increase the Gaussian blur to about 5%. And then come back and change the opacity to about 50%. What I'm going to do a little bit differently this time though, and it's something I like to do with a lot of my stickers that are kind of like sticky pads or sticky notes, I'm actually gonna come back up here to my first layer and hit my selection tool. And then I'm going to select warp. 
And what you can do is you can actually kind of lift the edge of your sticky notepad and it'll look like it's coming off of the page a little bit. So I'm just going to lift this edge slightly and I might lift this side depending on what it looks like. I'll leave that one down. I'm gonna lift this edge a little bit so it looks like it's coming up off of the paper. And I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to swipe right on those and group them. And what's great about grouping instead of flattening is that you'll have to hit undo a bunch of times for one, if you decide you wanna go back and not use the shadow. And another thing is I often like to have stickers that have the shadow and stickers that do not have the shadow. So if I wanna save a version of the stickers that don't have the shadow, I can. And if I do, I have that shadow still there so I can save a version that do have that shadow. So that's just a little bit of my sticker process. I'm going to create another sticker and I'll show you how I use fonts within my stickers. So something I really like doing is finding font duos that work really well and there's so many great fonts out there that you can use for free, personal or commercial use. I always download and use commercial use fonts in case I want to use them in anything that I sell. So I like heading to Creative Market to download fonts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn to my white color just so I can have a good base and I'm just going to write a little fun quote, like life is good. So now that I have this in there, what I'm actually going to do is come into edit text and then highlight the top of the text and I'm going to select a good font for that. Any of the fonts that I use, I will also be sure to link those in the description below. All right, so I'm going to choose this font and let me increase the size of that a bit. Then I'm going to select the bottom font and I'm actually going to use a font that pairs well with this one. We'll use this one. Okay, so I think those pair really well together. I did, I do have them together in one block. What I'm gonna do is come up here to my layers panel, hit edit text, come over here and select this A. I personally think the text functions in Procreate are a little finicky and I don't really like kind of the updates they made to the text, but anyhow, coming over here to leading, I'm just going to decrease the lead a bit. So it goes up a little more. And I'm still not really happy with that placement. Maybe I should have done two different text boxes, but an easy way around this is if you come up here to your selection tool, and I'm using the freehand option down here below to circle that. And then I'm gonna come over here to my selection arrow and then just move this because I kind of want them a little bit nested into each other. It does rasterize your text, but I'm okay with that. So now that I have that all as one, I'm gonna come over here a new layer and let's go with this pink color again and life is let's come over here to edit text and I'm going to use that same font kind of line these up to create an inline you can also just draw in your inline too. change good to the pink color by doing a drag and drop and then I'm actually going to create a layer below this, select a different pink color and head back over to my mono weight brush and just kind of draw a little label for this. And then I'll merge all of that down. So that's just a fun way to create text like stickers as well. You can incorporate your own lettering and stuff, but I really like making use of a lot of the fonts and supporting other font creators. So that's another way that I like to create stickers. Usually with stickers like the font stickers, however, what I like to do is kind of emulate a die cut sticker. And so what I'll do is I'll duplicate the sticker after I already create it, move it somewhere else on my canvas. And what I'm going to do is just turn off my first sticker that I created just in case I'd rather not to use a die cut version. I like to have copies of my stickers so I can have different versions of them. So some with shadow, some without, some with die cut, some without. So I'm just going to turn off my original sticker so I won't mess with it. I'm going to duplicate the die cut sticker and this is the layer below it. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to select white this time because I kind of want it to look like a die cut. I'm going to hit fill layer. I'm gonna come up here to my magic one and select Gaussian blur. And I'm just going to increase the blur. We'll go to 5% as well, around 5%. I'm going to select my magic one and just make sure it's under automatic. Click and I'm just going to increase. 
So I'm increasing the selection threshold and you'll see that there are blue lines appearing and that signals that it's kind of outside of the sticker. With this still selected, I'm gonna come up here to my pen, make sure it's under mono line or mono weight, increase the size and then color it in. And that kind of creates almost a perfect die cut sticker. So I'll turn off my selection. If you zoom in, there might be a few kind of rugged edges where you'll see some of the pixels. And what I like to do is just create a new layer above this, make sure I'm still on my mono line. At this point, I'll turn it down a bit. And then I'll just touch up the edges by going around. You can just draw an outline for your die cut. There are different ways and different tutorials of how you can create die cut looking stickers. However, I find this way to be the easiest and I already have a general outline of what the die cut shape will look like. So I can just touch it up if I need to. And then I'll just merge those and then I'll merge my top layer. And then if I wanted to, I could duplicate this, go back to my bottom layer, hit select, go to my black, fill layer, Gaussian blur again, increase to around 5%, come over here to my layers, and then my shadow layer, I'll decrease to around 50%, and then merge those two together if I want to, or I can group them. And now I have kind of a die cut looking sticker. And then I still have my original sticker that I created in case I want to use that as well. So I like to have different varieties while I'm creating sticker sets. And if I decide to ultimately go with no shadow, I have stickers where there's no shadow. If I decide to go with die cut, there's stickers for die cut. And it just creates a lot of options. And since I do sell my digital stickers, customers typically appreciate having multiple variety of the same sticker. So I'll create another die cut version of the sticker just so you can see that process again, because I know that type of digital sticker is usually well sought out. So I'm going to create this cute little clipboard using the stamp. Let's increase the size of that. So we'll create a die cut of this. And let's go with a red clipboard. That's fun, right? All right. So now that I have my clipboard all ready to go, what I'm going to do is duplicate that layer, come to the bottom layer, hit select, come to white, come back to the layer and hit fill layer. Then I'm gonna come over here to my Gaussian blur under my magic wand tool, hit layer. Then I'm going to increase the Gaussian blur so you can increase this to whatever percentage you want. I typically hover around anywhere from five to 10-ish. I'm going to stick with around five for all of these stickers. Now with that selected, I'm going to hit this selection tool and then just tap the sticker. It already has kind of that bluish outline, but if it doesn't, you wanna make sure that you press and hold. You can decrease your selection threshold or you can increase it. So kind of messed it up here. So let's just undo that. So you can de decrease it or increase it. So this looks like as much as it's going to go. With that still selected, I'm gonna come over here to my paintbrush. So as you can see, the lines are grayed out telling you that, hey, this is selected. I'm gonna make sure I am under my mono weights brush or mono line if you're using the default Procreate brushes. Just gonna increase that brush size and then paint across that selection. If you want the sticker to cut a little bit farther out from your original design, you can just repeat the steps by duplicating, coming to your bottom layer, Gaussian blur, come to your layer, increase the opacity again, come over here to your selection tool, select and increase the threshold, come over here to your pen, and then paint again. And then you'll just tap off your selection tool. So now we have another die cut sticker. And then I can just merge all of these together, duplicate, select, come to my black color, hit fill layer, and then I can repeat the process with my blur and then reducing the opacity for that shadow. And then I'll just group them. So there's another version of the die cut sticker. And these are the main types of digital stickers that I like to create. I like to create some that have this nice shadow. It's not necessarily a die cut sticker. Have some that kind of peel off of the page. 
Then I have kind of your plain stickers where it's just flat, looks really nice. And then these die cut options that also have a little bit of that Gaussian shadow as well. So that's my process for creating digital stickers. Again, I like to create them all on the screen size canvas and I have all of them all ready to go. When I'm ready to export my digital stickers, I wanna make sure that they're all flattened. So I'm gonna select these groups to flatten them. I will either come up here to my wrench tool and hit the share icon, and I can select PNG files and share them as layers. So I created five stickers and I saved five images to my camera roll. However, if you go into your photos, you'll realize that it still has the entire screen size canvas and just your sticker kind of floating on the canvas wherever you had it placed. So typically I actually have now liked going to share and selecting PNG and you want to make sure that you're sharing it as a PNG because if you don't share it as a PNG, it won't maintain that transparent background. Here lately, I like to just go to PNG and save it as a whole image. And with it saved as a whole image, I like to go on my computer and then just crop them individually. And I just find that a lot easier than having multiple layers saved and then cropping those down. Another way that I used to create stickers, this isn't my favorite way to create stickers anymore because like I said, I like to create them all where I can see them all on the canvas to make sure they're coordinating and working really well. So for example, all of these stickers are coordinating really well, but I used to create stickers by coming over here and going into a square canvas. And then what I used to do is I would create stickers each on their own layer, all on one canvas. So for instance, if I created this to-do list. I would blow it up to fit the entire canvas. Okay, so now that I have this sticker done really quick, I would have that as one sticker and then I would turn it off, add a new layer and then create another new sticker. So let's go with this one for instance. So there's a second sticker and then I would turn that off, new layer, new sticker. And so whenever I export all of those as layer files, they would already be cropped appropriately. However, like I said, I like to see them all on one canvas. So this was the second way that I was creating stickers. It's not my favorite way, but it's still a great way of creating digital stickers. Like I said, I just like having them all on a larger canvas so I can see them all at once. Then I can go in and pre-crop them later. This is a great way to easily just come up here to your share icon and select the PNG files as separate layers. So they're already cropped appropriately. So that is my updated process for creating digital stickers. And that is what I've been using to create all of these different sticker sets that have recently been released by K Digital Studio. And it's just been such a blast to mess around with these stickers and try out different die cut stickers and different styles. And that's my updated process for creating digital stickers. If you're interested in the stickers that I created in this tutorial, I'll have them down below for you as freebies on the K Digital Studio website. So if you like these stickers that I created in this video, you too can use them in your digital planner or your notebooks. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. This is my updated process for creating digital stickers and this is how I go about creating digital stickers every time. Of course, the stamp set, I don't use all of the time, but it has sped up my workflow when creating digital stickers because there's so many different flag types that I can use. I can add text on top of the flags. I can add my own patterns. I can clip different patterns or different textures to these, go in with different brushes. There's just so many possibilities besides dropping in color or painting in color. So there's just so much you can do with stamps and Procreate. And that's one of my favorite ways of creating digital stickers in the Procreate app. I also really like using different combos for fonts and stuff. So if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the video if you're new here and this is your first video of you're seeing of me. I'll be sure to post more videos like this as well. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. And again, don't forget, you can download these stickers for free to use in your digital planner if you liked the stickers that we created. I will see you next week with another video.